Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be going through everything you need to know to go beach driving in your four wheel drive. So here's five things that you need before you go beach driving for the first time in your four wheel drive. Number one, you guys want to get yourself a good recovery kit. That includes shackles, snatch straps, and a recovery blanket. So, the last piece of equipment that you should add to your recovery kit is a shovel. So, I will be going into this later in this video, so we'll get into it then. So, number two is a tire gauge. So the reason that you need a tire gauge when going forward driving on the beach is so that you can actually monitor what PSI your tires are at when letting down your tires or pumping back up. For example, if you just let your tires down willy-nilly and you go forward driving on the beach and you let your tire down to 6 PSI or something ridiculous like that, you run the risk of rolling a bead on your tire and causing damage to your vehicle. So why is the snatch strap important when going off-road beach driving? So even if you, you're solo driving guys, you definitely want to get yourself a snatch strap. They're quite inexpensive, $50 to $60. Um, and look, even if you're out by yourself and you do get stuck, and someone does come along, if you don't have a snatch strap and they don't have a snatch strap, they can't help you. Whereas if you do bring a snatch strap yourself and you know you do manage to get yourself stuck and another car comes by and they're willing to give you a hand, you can use your recovery equipment, use your snatch strap and um, they should be able to get you out. Next up, Max Tracks. Now, you definitely do not need these 100% to go forward driving on a beach for your first time. But look, if you've got the coin, they're about $300 for a pair of two. Um, and seriously, guys, these will get you out of some seriously, seriously bad situations on the beach. Um, they're absolutely unreal. So, no, you do not need them. But look, if you can afford them, they're going to help you out. And they're definitely worth the money. Alrighty, guys. So, number five is a tire deflator. Now, look, they aren't very expensive at all. Um, what these actually do is, you know, let air out of your tyres so that you can go down to the correct PSI for beach driving. Now, we'll get into that a bit later in the video of what PSI is best for beach driving um, and what I would recommend and, you know, obviously depending on conditions. But, um, look, these aren't... You, you don't need one of these, okay? So, look, I honestly, I have one and I barely ever use it. What I'll, what I'll show you guys what I honestly normally use. This is what I normally use, a stick, yes, a stick. Now, look, you can literally find these bloody anywhere you want. Um, you can use rock, a pen in your car. Um, I use this literally every single time I go off-road, let my tires down to 16, 20, whatever, depending on the conditions and what I'm driving. And this little baby works just fine. All right, guys, we're off the beach. Now, I'm gonna insert this clip back at the start of the video. I forgot to mention one of the most important things that you need to go beach driving is a goddamn compressor. I don't know how I forgot that, but I did. Um, yeah, compressor. You really need to get yourself a compressor. Now, depending which beach you're at, you can actually go to a nearby service station and pump your tires up, but that's all well and good. But if they're, you know, their pump up station isn't working, you're buggered, okay? You're driving around on the highway on 16 PSI, which you can't do. So you need to get yourself a compressor. Alrighty guys, so once you've picked yourself up those five items, you're ready to hit the beach. Um, we're just heading to the beach now, so um, we'll show you once we get there. Legends, 
now that you've actually made it to the beach, you've got your five necessities, I'm gonna show you how to let your tires down properly and what PSI to do. Sorry, I stuffed up. I was meant to say what PSI to go to. <laughs> Pro tip, pick a stick. This is what I'll be using to let my tires down. Alrighty guys, so here's where your tire gauge is gonna come into play. Alrighty, so I've just used my tire gauge. It's reading 22.5 PSI. So we do need to go down a little bit more. Now, today I'm gonna to be going down to about 16 PSI. I've just had a quick look at the sand. It is quite soft. Um, 16 is what I recommend. So it's a great starting PSI for pretty much all tires. Um, Alrighty guys, sorry about that. The camera decided to absolutely shit itself. But um, pretty much what I was trying to say is a good starting PSI is 16 PSI, okay? That's what I would recommend. Um, if you do get out there and you find that the vehicle is kind of struggling a little bit or it's revving quite hard, um, which you'll notice, just stop, let your tires down a little bit more, maybe like 12 PSI, and you should be able to go anywhere on the beach. Righty, so we've got 16.5 PSI, so I'll drop that down to 16, that's what I'm going to drop all the tyres to and um, we'll see how we go out on the beach today. Alrighty guys, last thing before we hit the beach, I just want to say please, please make sure you let your tyres down before you actually hit the beach. There's just way too many people going out, they get in their full drive, they're about to hit the beach and they just leave their, their tyres on road pressure. Now, why that is so stupid is that it just tears the track up for everybody else. You're probably not even going to get past the entrance. You're going to get bogged in the entrance. You're just going to embarrass yourself. And um, most of the time, beach entrances can be one way in, one way out. And um, you're just blocking the track for everybody else. So please, please do let your tyres down. Like I said, let them down to about 16. Um, you should be fine on that. Look, if it's really soft, then stop and let them down a little bit more, okay? Last thing before we head off onto the beach, you need to engage your four wheel drive in either low range or high range. Now, um, I would recommend high range in four wheel drive, first gear or second gear. Um, and I'm also going to show you guys how to turn off your traction control and why you should turn off your traction control. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to show you how to engage high range and low range in my four wheel drive. Um, now, it is different for every single person's four wheel drive, so 100% check your manual on how to do it in your car okay don't just take a tip or go off whatever your friend says because their car will be completely different okay now the reason that you want to turn traction control off when you're driving on the beach is because what actually happens is when your tires start spinning in the sand the car's actually going to think that you're slipping and that you've lost control of the vehicle and it's going to cut all power to your four-wheel drive okay so when that happens you're either going to get well, you're going to slow right down or possibly get bogged, okay? So I'll show you how I turn um, traction control off completely in my car. And um, like I said, it's different for every single car. So definitely go and check your user manual. Alrighty, guys. So once you have your car in four high, you're in neutral, you want to find this little button on your four-wheel drive. Now, like I said, it's going to be different for every car. That's my button there. Now, the general rule for most cars is hold this down for 10 seconds, okay? So we're holding that button, and there we go. It's come up here, we've got ESP off, and that's what you wanna see, all right? That means traction control is completely off. So now, you've got your car four high or four low, we've got traction control off, we're ready to hit the beach. So, tips for driving on the beach in your four-wheel drive. So, number one, I'm gonna start off with momentum is key. Now, why is momentum key when driving in the sand? Because pretty much, you're, you're, you're pushing your vehicle through the sand, okay? So, 
if you don't have momentum, you're putting so much extra pressure on your car trying to push it through something instead of just, you know, gliding along the tarmac or gliding through the ruts or on the hardest, harder sand, harder wet sand. You're pushing your vehicle through sand. So you really want to keep your momentum up. Now, keeping your momentum up on the sand, tips for doing that, keep your revs up. So depending on what car you have, I'm in a petrol. I like to keep my revs around, at the moment, 2,700 to 3,000. Um, now, I, obviously in a petrol, I can rev a lot more. Um, if you're in a diesel, you may want to stick around that two to two five mark. Um, once again, very big dependent. But yeah, guys, really keep your momentum up when you're on the sand. Um, it's going to help you out a lot. And um, you know, if you do stop and you let your momentum down, you, you don't follow through with your momentum. You're most likely, for example, right now I'm starting to slow down. I drop it down into first gear. I lost my mo my momentum. Going to build some more momentum up once I get up past this hill and then I should be right to go again. So to sum all that up, why momentum is key for driving on the sand is basically if you're driving slow on the sand, it's putting that much more strain on the vehicle. The tires are digging in because you're going so much slower. Whereas if you're going fast, the car's just skimming across the surface. It's The car's not working as hard um, and it's not gonna struggle. If you start to slow down, you lose your momentum. You're most likely gonna have to slow right up, drop down a gear and you could risk getting bogged. Alrighty guys, tip number two for driving on the beach in your four wheel drive. So tip number two is watch out for the tides, okay? Um, seriously, the tides can really, really fuck you over. Um, now, what I mean by that is if you are driving along near the water's edge, um, which I wouldn't recommend, by the way, um, yes, the sand can be a lot harder, but it also can be a lot softer. Now, if you get stuck right on the edge and there's a high tide coming in and you're getting salt water smashing all up into your car, you're really not going to have a good time and it's going to cause a lot of damage, a lot of rust on your car. So please don't drive near the water's edge. Um, depending on the beach, like for example, at Fraser Island, that if you drive near the water's edge there, it is like a sand highway. The, it is so hard, um, literally like a sand highway. So it really is beach dependent, but look, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. Just stay in the ruts up on the higher section of the beach um, and just keep your eye out on that tide. Alrighty, so I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. That's why I've been filming inside of the car because it is extremely windy out today, but I just want to show you what I'm talking about in that last clip, where to not drive on the beach, okay? And why the tides can really, you know, stuff you over if you get stuck here. All right, so to sum that up, I'm not sure if you can hear me because of the wind. Just don't drive down near the water's edge. If you do get stuck down there with no recovery gear, no one's around, um, you're absolutely buggered. Alrighty guys, so tip number three is staying in the ruts. Now, you probably ask yourself, why would you want to stay in the ruts? Why wouldn't you just make your own tracks? The reason that you want to stay in the ruts is because if you stay in the ruts, that sand is already compacted. It's already quite hard, okay? so. It's already been ploughed through, pushed through, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you're not, your car's not going to have to work as hard, and because it's already compact, you're just going to glide straight across it. So tip number three, stay in the ruts. on the beach. Now, a fair few beaches in Australia, um, road rules still apply. So you'll still want to keep left when driving on the beach. And it's just a rule of thumb anyway, guys. Like most people know, just keep left, okay? Keep left, if someone's coming down the beach, stick to the left. Pretty simple stuff, but um, look, I have, I, I have known of people to get pulled up by a ranger for just driving along the right side of the beach. So I'll insert a clip now of what I mean when I say keep left on the beach. I'm sure you guys understand what I mean, but I'll insert a clip now. All 
right, guys. Tip number five, don't park your four-wheel drive on hills, okay? So don't park on an uphill. You go to get in your car, you go to drive, you're just, you're just gonna sink. There's no chance. You can reverse out, that is an option. But um, look, what I'd recommend, park yourself on a flat bit or on a downhill section. It'll be much less work for the car and um, less risk of you getting stuck. Alrighty, tip number six, don't break in the sand. So obviously, as you can see, if you break in the sand, you're gonna sink. All right guys, here we go. We've sunken down a little bit from hitting the brakes. I'm in high range. I'm gonna go first gear and I have traction control fully turned off. I've got Liz filming outside here, so we'll see what happens. I reckon on this, even this slight little incline that I'm probably not gonna go anywhere, all right? because we're on a hill, just put her in reverse and you should be able to come down quite easily, okay? Tip number seven, watch out for drop-offs and washouts. Now there is no washouts here, I'm over at Stockton Beach, there is no washouts, but there is some bad, bad drop-offs. Um, right near the water's edge, now another spot to watch out for washouts and drop-offs, not just on the water's edge, but if you're doing sand dunes. Now, if you reach the peak of the top of a sand dune, you don't know what's on the other side, okay? So, there could be a drop off on the other side. It's happened to me, um, not in my full drive, but actually on my motorbike. Um, and you, you really can hurt yourself quite badly. Um, now, if you were to hit what I'm about to show you, if you were not paying attention and you were to um, basically drive over this this drop off, you're 100% rolling your vehicle. Now, I'll show you what I'm talking about now. I am still just talking in the car because it's way too windy outside, guys. So I'll get a quick little video now and show you what I'm talking about and then I'll jump back in the car. So as you can see, um, that is a pretty bad drop off. If you were to hit that, even at a slow speed, um, and you're not paying attention, you're probably gonna roll your car on that, honestly, um, or definitely do a fair bit of damage to your vehicle. So please keep an eye out for dropouts and washouts. Dropouts and washouts, I meant drop off, my bad. All right, so that was my seven tips and tricks for driving on the sand. Um, or driving on the beach in your four-wheel drive. Now, this next section of the video, guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to get yourself out of a bog with the recovery equipment that I showed you earlier in the video. So, we'll get right to it. Alrighty, so, I'm currently in the process of trying to get myself bogged. I'm in two-wheel drive, 16 PSI on my tires, and as you can see, I'm on my window down. I'm just cruising. So, it really goes to show that tire pressure what matters the most when doing when going beach driving. Alrighty, so I finally managed to get the Jeep bogged in two-wheel drive. It actually, it actually took longer than I expected, but um, I'll show you how she's looking. Alright, so she sunk right down in the rear. The front's still up quite a bit. We're on a bit of a hill. As you can see under there, we're almost, almost sitting on our diff. So the back is quite sunk in. All right guys, bog number one. So, got ourselves bogged here, finally. Um, <laughs> we're gonna get ourselves out using our shovel, okay? Now, I've got a little tiny midget shovel. Um, it's great because it's compact, but a negative about a shovel like this is you really can't reach right under the car. You really can't reach right under there. Um, so that's a tip, um, that's a con, sorry, about having a smaller shovel. If you have a longer shovel and you're buried up to your chassis, you can reach right under there and get all that shit out from under the chassis, all that seam. So um, we'll get digging and we'll show you what we're gonna do. Alrighty, so 
We just started shoveling the rear. We just started shoveling the rear of the car when we got stopped by these guys. Managed to get themselves into a bit of a pickle as well, so they might be joining me. Alright guys, so as you probably saw in that last clip, um, I actually ended up getting myself bogged in two wheel drive. Um, someone, I was planning to get myself out with a shovel, um, and then a Pajero, yeah, Pajero. Pajero came along and um, asked if I needed a hand, and he actually ended up getting bogged himself quite badly. Um, so as you saw in those clips, I ended up giving him a hand, gave the Max tracks a go, couldn't go really uphill because that's not really going to work. Couldn't really go back hill. It was just a very, very soft section. Um, so I ended up giving him a little snatch out, which took a few goes, and um, ended up getting myself out as well. But um, yeah, we're absolutely buggered though. Um, so we're not going to shoot how to get out with a shovel. Um, it's quite simple, guys. Just dig, dig a uh, dig a ramp if you're going forwards, a downhill ramp. Um, or if you're going to go backwards, downhill ramp for the back and do it for all four wheels. Um, let your tyres down a little bit more and that should get you out quite, quite easily, okay? Alrighty guys, last part of the video, we're off the beach and um, we're going to pump up our tyres. Alrighty, now that we've got the compressor all plugged in, we can start pumping up our tyres. So, like I mentioned at the start of the video, you're going to need your tyre gauge again so that you can check that you've pumped your tyres back up to the correct road pressures suited for your tyres. So for me, I'm going to pump mine back up to 39 PSI. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, drop a comment below, and make sure you subscribe in the top left corner. Thanks for watching.